Are you having a shoulder pain due to shoulder instability, particularly winged shoulder? And if so, you should watch this video. And by the end of this video, you will learn how to improve your shoulder stability and then reduce scapular winging effectively with a simple movement retraining. And by the way, if you haven't watched my last video, then please be sure to watch it at the link below. If you want to learn how to retrain your body and then movement safely and then effectively and then move better, subscribe to my channel and hit the bell to be notified when I post a new video every week. I am Taro Iwamoto. I am a Feldenkrais practitioner with my background in athletic training, physical therapy, martial arts, and the Feldenkrais method. I have helped many people like you overcome and then move beyond the pain and the limitations. Now it's your turn and let's dive in. So what is a wing scapula? Let me explain very briefly and without being too technical using the skeletal model. So scapula or the shoulder blade here and then so the muscles there's a muscles called the serratus anterior muscles and that connect shoulder blade and to the rib cage so it keeps the shoulder blade and shoulder girdle stable but when there is a weakness of these muscles and what happens is when you move your arms or when you're doing push-ups that type of movement and this, the muscles, doesn't keep the shoulder blade uh, stable against the ribcage. And then inside border of the scapula, it moves a little bit away from the ribcage. And then this, or wings. And this is referred to as the shoulder, uh, shoulder blade winging or scapular winging. That. Right. So while this indicates the weakness, uh, the instability of the shoulder girdle, but you may or may not have a pain, shoulder pain. But if you do shoulder, uh, if you do activities that involve a repetitive use of your arms, your shoulders, and then over time, and you you could potentially have repetitive uh, stress injuries to your shoulders because of the. Um, instability and because of that scapular winging. So what causes the weakness of this serratus anterior muscles? You could have a nerve damage, the nerve that innervates the muscles. It's called the long thoracic nerve. So you could have a nerve, a nerve damage that causes the weakness in the muscles. Or you could also have a habitual movement patterns that underuse the muscles here and then that have led to the weakness of the muscles. So let's talk about how to improve a scapular winging and then improve the shoulder stability. While there are many specific strengthening exercises for serratus anterior muscles, and I like to think the shoulder functions from a developmental movement perspective. In early development in the first two years as a babies, as a small child, and we use the arms for weight bearing a lot as we grow. And as we become adults and then stand and walk, and we start to use, we use the arms more for reaching and carrying, not as much in weight bearing, right? And so the first two years, and then as the babies crawl, and those movement patterns, and then say, really are important to develop a stability of the shoulders and in coordination of the shoulders. So when you, when you have a condition like a scapular winging and then a shoulder instability, it's a good idea to kind of go back and, and work on early, earlier um, fundamental movement patterns like crawling patterns and then trying to develop a coordination and then a stability back and around the scapula, uh, the shoulder girdles and in the shoulders. And then that will really help to strengthen the serratus anterior muscles and then bring that stability back to the area. So let me introduce you two simple exercises that will retraining the movement patterns and then bring a stability back into the shoulder girdle and reducing that scapular winging. So you really don't need any equipment. So you're going to be getting on your hands and knees positions on the floor. 
And if you have a sore knees and you can be, uh, you can put a mat and just pat up the floor so it's a little easier on your knees. And if you have um, issues with the wrist, weight bearing through the wrist, you can make a fist and you can do um, on, your, on your fist instead of on your hands. So getting into the old forward position on your knees and in your hands. Your back is more or less neutral, so it's not rounded too much, it's not arched too much. So get, and then your hips over your knees, and then your shoulders over your wrist. So this is the starting position. And from here, and you're going to do, the first exercise is very slow crawling and coordinate movement of the leg and movement of your arms. Here, so you move them together. So you move your knee and move your hand simultaneously. And then take your time. So this transition is when you're weight bearing through your arm, right, your shoulder. And when you do that, and do it so that you are stabilizing your arm so you're not collapsing through your shoulder. Here, support and take about five seconds to advance and move. Here. You can go forward, or you can just go back and forth, like so. And so you can focus on the one side, then I'll do about 15 times. If 15 is too much, you can do 10 times. So make sure that you are concentrating to support and stabilize that on the weight-bearing arm. And once you're done one side, and then you switch sides. So this is how slowly you want to do. You don't want to do it too fast because when you do it too fast, it's so easy to compensate, okay? And you don't even know that you are uh, compensating. And that's really not retraining the movement patterns. By slowing down the movements and then being very intentional in how you're moving. And that's how you're going to retrain the movements. So what's the focus and what's the objective of this movement retraining is to bring the stability back to the shoulder girdle so that you are um, strengthening those serratus anterior muscles in a functional way, right? So say you've done a 10 to 15 repetitions on each arm and switch sides. And how many sets? I recommended two to three sets but you make an adjustment based on your strength and your functional level. If that's too much, reduce it. And if that's too easy, increase it. But the slow down the movement, that makes it harder. If you do it fast, that makes it easier. And then it's easy to compensate. So that's not going to be helpful. Uh, so that's the first exercise. Let's do the second exercise. And second exercise, you're also going to be on your hands and knees. So same position as the previous one. And from here, so keep your knees apart about the width of your pelvis. Your hands apart about the width of your shoulders. So from here, your back somewhat neutral, so it's not too round or too arch. Okay, so from here, and slowly, and slide your knee, so I'm gonna do it with my right side, slide my right knee into the space between my hands somewhere, and then slowly begin to lower my hip, right hip down to the floor. And then you're supporting the weight mostly now on your right arm, or I'm supporting my weight on my right arm right now. So here, this is where you really want to take your time because this is how you are going to improve the stability of your shoulder, right? So now you're sitting sideways and you're going to reverse out and from sitting sideways and back to onto your hands. So how do you get back? You initiate, right? Way bearing through that arm, same arm pressing that hand into the floor. If that's too hard, on your fist, press the fist. And slide your knee 
back to where you start. So you do that same side 10 to 15 times, again, very, very slowly. You do it too fast, you're going to compensate. Then you're not going to retrain the movement. Slow. This transition from here, controlling. Slowly bringing your hip down. Control. Here, and then slowly transitioning out from sitting and back onto your hands and knees positions here. So the key is moving slowly so that you can change how you're using your shoulders. And then by using that, you're going to feel it around the shoulder blade if you do it very slowly. And those are the muscles and those are the areas that you want to start to use more. Those probably are underused and that lead to wing scapular instability of the shoulder girdle. And these two exercises are specifically targeted in retraining those movement patterns. You change those patterns. And you're going to change the muscles, right? So you're really working on the movement patterns in order to strengthen those muscles, not the other way around. So that's why I'm not really talking about, let's strengthen the muscles. We're talking about specific movement functions, uh, specific uh, movement patterns to change how you use those muscles. Repetitions and then sets, just as a general guide, I recommend slowly doing those exercises at 10 to 15 repetitions, two to three sets be a good idea or a good start. And feel free to adjust reps and sets and depending on how you do it. If it's too hard, make it reduce the reps and sets, of course, and if it's too easy and move it even more slowly and then add repetitions and add sets as you are able to. But never compromise quality of the movement and for the sake of getting more repetitions. That is not going to help you, that it actually is going to defeat the purpose of this training. So I hope you find this video helpful, and if you did, then please let me know in the comment section below. If you want to improve your back pain, be sure to grab your free movement guide to pain-free back at the link below. Check out these videos. And if you like this video and hit that like button and be sure to subscribe and share with your friends, comment below how helpful you found this video was. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next video. Happy mindful movement. Bye bye.